development column. So to focus in on the Ukiah Valley area plan, the concern regarding this time frame was with the, the delay in looking at the water study and kind of the, the rippling impacts that that might have. So um, this reflects uh, the water study um, being approved today and beginning in August. <clears throat> ever, ever the hopeful one. So starting out in, in July, we are looking at new mixed use uh, land use classifications. And um, you heard that referenced yesterday in the general plan that the work being done with UVAP is going to be cross-referenced with the general plan. Uh, you can see today's discussion regarding the water supply analysis contract. And then assuming that that is approved, the water supply analysis would begin in August. And very key to that would be working with the water districts in this area. And we know that that's a part of it. And one of the first things that we would do is have a kickoff meeting. We had already kind of broached that subject and had commitments to that. So it would be a kickoff meeting of the water districts in the Ukiah Valley area plan area. And um, it would be orienting them to the water supply analysis as well as um, gaining their, their cooperation and basically setting up a team. And, and that's where this is kind of broader than the Ukiah Valley area plan, because I think in the process of bringing folks together and focusing their efforts together, it can have um, positive impacts beyond this specific contract and project. Uh, just to acknowledge, there are other things going on in UVAP at the same time. Now is when we're focusing on the greenhouse gas analysis. And that is an area where, quite frankly, staff expertise uh, we do have staff expertise in that area and are utilizing that to provide some of the basic numbers uh, along with analysis that would be provided by consultants and incorporating that into the draft EIR. So if you turn over to the next quarter, which is October through December of this year, um, the consultant should be completing the water analysis and draft report in October of this year. And in October and November, consultants and staff would be working on the draft UVAP BIR. I mean, that's kind of the backdrop that's happening all the way along the line, but they focus on different sections at different times. In November, <clears throat> then, the water supply report would be provided to staff and incorporated in the EIR, and that would be completed in November and December. January 2009 is when uh, staff review and finalization of the drafts occurs. And this goes into a little bit more detail, but partly I want you to know kind of what happens behind the scenes. I know what it appears like to you. It's like you don't hear anything, and then we pop up on your agenda at some point and, yeah, on a Monday, and it's like, oh, okay, you know, where did this come from? Well, where it came from is a lot of work just constantly going on in the background. And so this somewhat acknowledges that. And... Um, the idea then is in February 2009, the draft UVAP and draft EIR would be released for public review. Um, in this particular case, we're releasing them both at the same time because they are linked and because drafts of the Ukiah Valley Area Plan have been more recently available than the example being the drafts in the general plan update. So acknowledging that and acknowledging that the two uh, fit together even more closely than the general plan and its EIR. We're releasing them at the same time. And there would then be a presentation to the board on the draft Ukiah Valley Area Plan and the draft EIR. So similar to what happened yesterday, but for both the plan and the EIR. In March, there would be public presentations on draft UVAP and EIR held throughout the Ukiah Valley area. In April, it would go to the Planning Commission and the Airport Land Use Commission, uh, which I guess meets on the same day as the Planning Commission, one of the Thursdays. So th those meetings would happen in April. And then in May would be the board public hearing on the draft Ukiah Valley Area Plan and the EIR. And at that point, the public review period would, would end. <clears throat> In June and July, you've got the consultants and staff reviewing and responding to that input and producing the final drafts. August, a final draft of the UVAP EIR uh, would be released for public review. 
September, again, you've got your Planning Commission hearing, and then in October, you would have your Board of Supervisors hearing, uh, public hearing to approve the final UVAP and EIR. And then from there, you go on to implementation activities. So that's the, the layout, and you can see that it, it follows behind the general plan by uh, a couple of months, and, uh, but there's kind of a pattern of releasing it, presenting it, public review, planning commission meeting, and then board public hearing, and we're trying to get into that rhythm. So are there any questions on the outline or the time frames? Okay. Um, Seeing this, none. Okay. Assuming that, that uh, this, this stands, then our goal would be to put this on the planning team um, website at the conclusion of today so that uh, these time frames can be out there. So with that, I want to move on to the, uh, the contracts. Uh, first of all, the other contract for uh, management of the planning team has been withdrawn because we will handle it on a shorter term, uh, lower cost, lower level basis, and, um, and handle that you know, at a level that, that does not require board support. If for some reason the time frame lengthens or the costs go up, then it does need to come to the board and it will at that point and it'll have to stand on its own. So that leaves us with the contract with West Yost and Associates. <clears throat> when Ukiah Valley Area Plan was revived as a project in late 2006, it was termed a reassessment. And I have to say that that term never made a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, but Ultimately, what the planning team did was it assessed the situation and said, you know, we need a, a new process. There had been several different processes related to UVAP, and the conclusion was that they all had validity and they all had flaws, and that in this particular case, we needed a, a, a new approach. Interestingly enough, that new approach focused on what were termed study areas. and. Um, you know, each approach has its, its positive and negatives, but one of the things the approach of using the study areas did is it wonderfully distilled down to what the issues really were. And so what you find is at least in terms of geographic area or acreage or whatever, there's quite a bit of agreement throughout the Ukiah Valley on what should happen in many places. However, there are a couple of areas that are very clearly identified at this point where there are differences of opinion, and some of them strongly held. And the process has identified where those are, and I think that has focused the discussion. The a EIR itself is a new e e EIR. I think at one point there was some feeling, well, the old process from several years ago had gotten to the point of a draft EIR. There's no way you pick up a, an old draft EIR on a previous draft plan. It, it just isn't possible. And so we knew we basically had to start again, and that's what this has done. However, <clears throat> we have, as we have gone along in the UVAP process, as well as now the EIR process, we are discovering things that I think ultimately had been discovered before and we get a chance to discover them again. One is there was no provision for UVAP specific traffic data and analysis. We've already talked about that a number of times. The estimate is that that's added about six months to the process. And you can see where that traffic study, you've heard it referred to with UVAP, well, it also had